is a surprising admission. Amber Rudd, the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Universal Credit, has admitted that problems with its introduction have led to a rise in food banks. The Trussell Trust, which runs food banks across the country, published research this month showing that where Universal Credit had been in place for a year or more, the use of food banks had increased by 52%. That compares with an increase of 13% elsewhere. Here's Amber Rudd in the Commons yesterday. Mr Speaker, we are committed to a strong safety net where people need it. It is absolutely clear that there were challenges with the initial rollout of universal credit and the main issue that led to an increase in food bank use could have been the fact that people had difficulty accessing their money early enough. We have made changes to accessing universal credit so that people can have advances, so that there is a legacy run-on after two weeks of housing benefit, and we believe that that will help with food insecurity. Well, universal credit replaces six different benefits, but it only pays out monthly. And when someone's moved on to it, they may have to wait five weeks for their first payment. The Conservative MP Heidi Allen describes that as utterly dysfunctional. We'll speak to her in a moment. First, though, Andrew Hustler is from Cardiff and was moved on to universal credit last year. Good afternoon to you. Hi, good afternoon. How did it work for you when you moved? Absolute nightmare, to be honest. Why? Um, Because I worked one day in August... I didn't get any money then till, oh, I think it was halfway through September. And of course, you still got to live on that. You got to uh, you pay your gas, your electric, your water, your rent. And if it wasn't for the food banks, uh, uh, I don't know where I'd have been. OK, so what? The money that you did have went on bills and then you were stuck for food? Y- yes. So h- how long was the gap between, effectively, between payments, between the old system and the new? Um, well, I was fortunate enough, do I say fortunate enough, not to have been on the old system, but that I was uh, a while ago. But I'd, as I said, I lost my job uh, end of July, start of August. Then I had to wait then, because I had one day's employment in August. I had mm. to wait then until sort of halfway through September. Did you ask somebody? I mean, did you say, look, this isn't, I, I can't live on this? <laughs> well, you try. The advisor in the job centre was, was nice enough, but their hands are tied from what they can do. What did they say? I can't really remember, to be honest, but they weren't... She was good, but uh, as I said again, their, their hands are tied from what they can and can't do. Mm. So what what did you do? Oh, friends, family, and you know, and uh, I had to uh, see what they could do for me. Now, the, th- the thinking, of course, about universal credit is that the payments mirror what it's like in work. Are you in a situation now where it's all right? <laughs> no, they don't mirror what they are in work, no. When you're in work, you can, uh, you can expect to take home a 1000 maybe 1200 a month after tax and insurance. But it's, it's less than half of that a month that you, you actually do get in credit, in uh, you know, universal credit, because you get your rent paid in with it. So that really, technically speaking, that's Mm. not yours. That belongs to the landlord or whatever. But my housing association, Cadwin, have been very good with me. Okay, but but in terms of the timing of the payment, the fact it's every month, are you able to cope with that now? It might have been one can understand why it would be difficult at the beginning, but have you got used to that now? Not really. No, I don't think you you do get used to it. To be honest, you know, I've been going from from a job where I was taking over reasonable every month to. To something less than that. So, so how do you feel about the 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 system and the way it's been introduced? Yeah, well, <laughs> what I think of it, what I can say, it's two different things, to be honest. What? Because they're unbroadcastable. I yeah, should, I should yeah. <laughs> I'm really careful about asking you this. Yes, yes. I don't think very much of it. I can see where they're coming from you know, to try to get people used to getting paid monthly to go back here, you know, try to get them back into work. But you can go for interview with interview and interview, but it's up to the employer whether they want to take you on or not. Right. But from your point of view, that difficult period, I mean, how did it... You you, you went to food banks and you managed to get food from food banks. You found a way through. Yes, yes. And, and how would you change it? In what respect? Well, is it... I mean, because... Is it the timing? Would you change the frequency of the payments that you got? I mean, obviously, we'd all like to be given a lot more money, but if, assuming <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah. affect that. Yeah, it would be better to go back to the old system, being paid fortnightly. That way, 
you can budget it better. You know what's yeah, you, you know, there's only like sort of 14 days, two weeks between each payment, whereas opposed to sort of 30 days. Do you think that politicians don't get it? Oh, definitely. So, yeah, they live in a different world. Well, Andrew Hustler, uh, thank you very much for talking to us. And I hope you find find it easier uh, as life goes on. I suppose, I suppose it's ever, you hope, you'd hope to get a job at some point. Um, Andrew Hustler, thank you very much. Well, those criticisms of politicians being out of touch uh, is one they're well used to. And it was one that was put directly to Amber Rudd when she spoke to Nick Robinson for his political thinking podcast. And it hinted uh, that her answer hinted that she would take a different approach to her predecessor in the job. You're from a posh background. You know, you're the daughter of a stockbroker. Yes. You lived in Kent. You had a posh house in, big, big house in Wiltshire. You went to Cheltenham Ladies, <laughs> posh girls' school. Yes, yes. And they might say, she can't love us. She's not like us. She doesn't know what we're like. Well, I would say to that, uh, you know, judge me on what I do. You know, it doesn't matter what background you came from. I mean, I, I acknowledge, of course, I was incredibly privileged, mostly because of the love it was obviously a theme, I'm afraid, today, Nick. Mm-hmm. The love in my family, but also a privilege of wealth, it's true. But I was able to, I felt early on, form a sort of connection within my community, working with sort of local groups that took me into politics. And the most important thing that I do as a politician is think about how I can help communities, help other families down my road in Hastings, help people who might need help more than I did when I was younger. Well, let's hear now from Heidi Allen, the Conservative MP for South Cambridgeshire, who has been uh, touring food banks around the country with the now independent MP, Frank Field. Uh, now, you, good afternoon to you. Hello there. You've described the um, five-week wait for universal credit as utterly dysfunctional. Does it have to go? In, in my view and, and many people's views, yes, it does. Um, I think, you know, if what was interesting hearing Andrew chatting a moment or two ago, he had, you know, no savings in the bank. If you or I were to lose our jobs, we'd, we'd bumble along for a few months and we'd be OK. But, you know, the, the whole essence of universal credit is it waits four weeks for you to prove what you've earned before it makes a judgment, which then takes a week of admin to decide what you're entitled to. But if you're coming onto the system with nothing, then it feels just the system is, is not built for purpose if you have to wait four weeks to prove that you had nothing at the beginning of that. So yes, that five-week wait absolutely has to go for people with who are very vulnerable and have nothing in the bank okay. at all. But the government says it has made changes and they've said things like that no one has to wait for their first payment if they urgently need it. They can receive up to 100% advance payment on the same day they apply. But that, but that is flawed. And this is one of the um, things we need to overcome in the House of Commons, that MPs believe that that is a solution. As we also heard from Andrew just then, the actual basic amount you get to live on is not enough because of the benefits freeze and that's another thing we're asking for that the fourth year of the benefits freeze due to start this year should be cancelled the fundamental money isn't enough to start with and then your advance payment has to be paid back so you're then seeing your future universal credit payments assuming you don't you know you're not fortunate and you don't find work they're going to be reduced even further so never mind a welfare safety net it's becoming a foot on your head that's going to push you further and further under the water okay so we just heard amber rudd there say she wanted to help people who are in poor situations do you think she's going to change that too i very much hope so and you know I, i've given amber rudd rightly deserved praise since she's taken up the job. I mean, Esther did a great role also, but perhaps more hidden than Amber in the the money she got secured for universal credit in the budget. But Amber has come out and set the tone very differently. And I know she's listening to experts, you know, because there are experts out there that have more knowledge than us politicians. And I know for a fact she's met repeatedly with some of them and she's listening to alternative options that we're presenting to her. Okay, well, she's presumably as a relatively, she's relatively new in the job. She's got a limited amount of time when she can change things. She has changed some, Although she's recognising this impact on food banks as a result of this, it didn't sound like she was necessarily going to go any further than she has. No, I, I disagree. Um, you know, and, and she's right to say, judge me by my actions um, and, and let's see, you know, let me prove to you that I can do it. And in terms of her track record, even in the short time she's been in the job, you know, the, the two first things that the Select Committee and myself and other backbenchers asked her to look at because they were time pressured were the migration uh, regulations for the managed migration process and also the two child limit, which would have retrospectively hit people on UC that would have started in February. Both of those she grabbed immediately, dealt with them, fixed with them. Okay. Okay, so what else? So you want the five-week uh, wait 
to change and the monthly payment to change as well? Well, it's, it's the benefit freeze that needs to be lifted, which has capped um, all working age benefits since, um, well, back to 2010. And if you look at the way um, that pensions have risen, wages, cost of living, inflation, absolutely everything else has increased apart from working age benefits. And people cannot physically, I couldn't live on that money every week, let alone then having some of it taken away through an advance payment. OK, so you want the money to go up, but is the Prime Minister able to given everything else that she's doing at the moment, is she focusing enough tension on this? Well, I mean, you're right, there is, you know, Brexit is consuming all the oxygen. But, you know, as I said, when I think back to my maiden speech in 2015, you know, people working in, in low paid work, um, you know, at the base of our economy, if they can't continue to work, because it's better for them to be off work than to go into it. If universal credit isn't, you know, pushing the right levers, then our whole economy stops turning. You know, they're the first rung that turns the wheel that is our economy. And if they're out of work, then absolutely everything will then crash down around us. So it's vital that we focus investment at that level. Heidi Allen, uh, thank you very much uh, for talking to us. Now then, the...